Hello everybody, welcome back. Craig Peterson here on WGAN and online at craigpeterson.com slash YouTube. Join me there, you can see the whole show as I recorded it. Well, now we're going to talk about Russian hacking, right? Hasn't that been kind of all of the rage over the last, what, two or three years? The Mueller report and what did the Russians do? How could they have done that to us? Should we be worried about it, more worried than we are or have been? All, frankly, very good questions. And we need to know because we've got another election coming up, right? 2020 is an election year. We've got... Uh, Less than a month, in fact, from today, the first votes will be cast in the first primary. And um, and then it's New Hampshire. Well, it isn't a primary, actually. It's Iowa. It's a caucus. Then New Hampshire primary. And I think it's Nevada. And then, what, one of the Carolinas. And this just, it, it accelerates from there, right? You got the Super Tuesday, which got moved up and everything else. But how safe are our elections? I think it's a really, really good question. What did the Russians do? What did they know? How did they hack it? And can we do something about this in the future? Now, we've got all kinds of voting machines. And if you've been listening to me for a while, you know I like the manual ones where you have a it's a it's a sheet of paper. Right. And on that, you've got all of your candidates and you kind of fill in the little circle. They give you a felt pen, a flare pen, right? A little felt pen to fill in the people you're voting for. And that's as simple as it gets, isn't it? And then you put it in a machine, the machine reads it, the machine is pre-programmed to know that that this circle filled in here means a vote for this person or for these people or for that uh, particular thing that's on the ballot, whatever it might be, right? The reason I like those is it gives us the best of both worlds. We have the world of oh, wow, isn't this simple? I can go ahead and vote. Ta-da! Wonderful times had by all. And you can vote quickly. The votes can be counted quickly. We know at the end of the day how many people were voted for. And we know who the winners are. But what if there's a problem? Well, with a paper ballot again, that ballot can be sat in front of people who are ballot commissioners or whatever they might be called in your county or your state. And they look at those one by one and decide who this vote is for. So if there's a contested voting that, that's occurred, they can take them, they put them into literal stacks and uh, this is, these are the people who voted for this person, these voted for another person, and then they count them up. And now they've got the winners. And you can have a Republican, a Democrat, an independent, whoever, police officers, looking at these and counting them. But so many places have gone to these electronic voting machines. And the electronic voting machines are a nightmare and a half. Because with these electronic voting machines now, you're looking at the ballot trying to figure out okay who voted for what because you don't have a ballot at best some of these machines have a little paper audit tape that comes out and they can go through it think think of what you get from the uh receipts from buying something at the store right so i i've got one let me pull one out here for you okay so this is a a receipt like you'd get at a store right this particular one's from walmart and you know so there you go you can see what i bought at walmart well simple enough but you've got sheets of these things they're affected by heat they are affected easily by being torn and in my case being sitting there in my pocket right as i'm trying to uh keep track of them for the accountant right for taxes at the end of the year or the end of the quarter for businesses so i am just trying to keep track of all of it well how if the machine is just a tablet how are you going to keep track of it how are you going to know what the actual vote was meant to be we've had a lot of complaints of people saying well i hit the button for so and so or the part of the screen for so-and-so, and and yet it registered my vote for someone else. At least they think it registered for someone else. It might have registered properly. It might be the right vote for the right person who they wanted. 
But in reality, they don't know because it looked like it was registering the vote for the other guy. And now, after the end of the day, how are they going to audit it? So with the paper ballots, you can go in and you can look at them and you can do a spot check. You can say, okay, let's just make sure this machine was doing it right. Let's make sure we didn't mess up stuff when we sent it out to people. Well, when we're talking about this here with this whole Russian involvement with our election, we're not really talking about these machines, although potentially could happen. What we're talking about is a couple of other things. First of all, meddling with our election, where they're buying ads on Facebook or they're buying ads somewhere else and people get really upset. Well, you know, frankly, for good reason, because now it's a Russian ad saying vote for Hillary or a Russian ad saying vote for Donald, and both of which happened in the last election cycle, although most of them happened after the election, which is just totally bizarre for me. Anyhow, there was a technology company in Florida, according to some government reports, that was hacked. Now, here's what happened. They used a phishing attack against this company in order to gain access to their computer systems and then get passwords and then get inside the machines. Now that's where the problem comes up because it's not necessarily even the voting machines like what I'm showing on the screen here. It's not necessarily these voting machines because what can happen, frankly, is that the voting machines information is sent to ultimately the, the state, right? Ultimately, the um, whoever's in charge, you know, it varies. New Hampshire, we have Bill Gardner, and his office at the Secretary of State's office, but it varies from state to state. So ultimately, these tallies go to our friends at the Secretary of State's office. And then they're posted on the website. And then what happens in the national elections is they go to the various individual secretaries of states and they say, who did your people vote for? And they add them all up. So the Russians could hack the Secretary of State's office, the Russians could hack the voting machines, and the Russians could influence us by buying ads on Facebook or these other social media platforms on Google to try and get us to vote differently. Well, this is from Politico, which, as you know, Politico is a very left-wing leaning of website out there. It's really kind of a political organization that masquerades as a news source but this is a pretty good article here so they're saying that people were going to vote in north carolina and in north carolina there had been a court ruling that said that people did not need to prove who they were were in order to vote you know they have to prove who they are for everything else to buy to buy a glass of beer you have to prove who you are right in your age some places even you're 60 years old, they want to card you. You say, are you, are you kidding me? No way I'm going to do that. So in Durham County, they were using laptops, and those laptops had the voter records on them, and those voter records were used to determine if they had already come and voted or if they had shown ID. Well, they have had all kinds of problems with these, and when they started digging in, they found that this company called VR Systems had allegedly been targeted by Russian hackers in a phishing campaign three months before the election. And phishing is what Russians and others are using, not just to influence our elections like what we're seeing here, but to get into our bank accounts, our business accounts. It's just absolutely crazy. So this article goes on and on, going back to twenty. 16 and what had happened you might find it very interesting but the bad news is things just haven't changed much so expect some more problems with our 2020 election hey coming back i'm going to tell you about something my wife and i did to lose a hundred pounds between the two of us okay i'm not selling anything this is amazing i i don't even consider this a diet so we'll get to that when we get back. I got a couple of great articles on that that I think you will like. So stick around. We'll be right back.